borrowing uh, at high interest rate a $1 billion company called Beatrice International Foods. So your question is, how did he become like that? And he always says when he, when he hit the papers, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Fortune, Time Magazine, he said, you know, Loida, I'm not an overnight success. So what it means is that it's a long way to becoming who he became. It started when he was young. His mother left his father when he was five years old. Yes. And so when they went to his grandparents' home, his mother's, his mother's parents, and the grandfather saw this young boy. You know, the grandparents had 10 children. And then here's another one, five-year-old Reginald Lewis. The father started to curse. Bleep, 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 another mouse to feed. You know what that means. And so the mother said, bring my son upstairs, please. And as he was going up, the mother said, don't worry, Dad. We pay our way. So from a very young child, he understood you are responsible for your own self. Be responsible. Pay your way. So that's the first lesson. And as he was growing up, his grandmother put a Coca-Cola bottle and, and nailed it on the floor so that he, sir, he earned what you have been talking about, saving your money. Anytime somebody gives you money, he places it on that Coca-Cola, you know, the bank. So again, the spirit of, or the uh, habit of saving money, which is what you're teaching, okay? And the last one is perseverance. Determination. You set a goal and you just go after it. Again, when he was growing up, he wanted to be, not yet, eventually when he was in uh, seventh or eighth grade, he wanted to be the richest man in America. That was his goal. Grade eight? And grade seven, grade eight. And how to become that, like that? You know, initially it was to become, no, initially it was to become, uh, a, a, what do you call this now? A, um, Baseball player, mm -hmm. so he would do his his stepfather had a ball on a tree, and every day after school he would hit that ball, hit that ball. Practice. Practice. Okay. He became also the quarterback of his mm -hmm. college, and every every in the in high school for was practice throwing that ball, throwing that ball, and when he became a lawyer, okay. He was already, we were already married, he would be out every night hustling, giving his card. Mm -hmm. So the first thing, goal setting, and then working hard, and not letting anyone, um, don't let failure be the end to your ambition. Okay? In fact, celebrate failure, mm -hmm. because if you learn from it, it's just another name for success. Oh, Those are his so secrets. Beautiful. So you see, those principles never really change then and now. And uh, it so happened, Madam Loida is talking about that page in the book that I taught my daughter when she was young, when we were new here. Um, you know, I uh, set her up to uh, pay for work. Like, nothing is really free in this world. So she made her own uh, chart where she made four uh, chores. And I taught this to the AFTA Association, and we went to different public schools to teach raising financially responsible children. So that if she made $20, like $1 for each chore times five, she made 20, I doubled it as in a 401k, I match it, and that's the money that we spent going to McDonald's or the thing. Mm -hmm. Christina knows my daughter so well when she was small. Mm -hmm. And again, she talked about goal setting, you guys uh, um, watching us on the show, because you're not here live, but this book um, available in Amazon talks about goal setting, exactly how you're going to do it. It comes with the charts. But um, aside from that, you said it was eighth grade, and I know tenacity is one of the biggest secret. Before he got the TLC, uh, I read somewhere in the book that he was so down because he just got disappointed with one deal and the mother said something about that. Yes, when he was 12 years old, he got a scholarship to go to a camp for two weeks. But while he was, what 
When he was 10, he started delivering papers, Afro-American, in the neighborhood. He started with two, his parents and his neighbor, and he grew it to 100. So every, twice a week, he would deliver the papers. But then this is, there is this camp that he's going to. Who will deliver my papers? And the mother said, don't worry, I'll deliver it. So with the baby, his youngest, his younger brother, she would deliver for two weeks all around. So when he came back, he said, all right, where's my money? What? The mother said, I deliver the papers. I keep the money. He was so mad. He said, I'll sue you. <laughs> his mother. And his stepfather then said, all right, Carolyn, give it to him. And the mother said, all right, here it is. No tip? No. So, but what did he learn? What did he, what did she tell him? When you are making a contract, set your terms up front. Okay. Don't say, oh, I trust him. No. He went away without telling his mother, all right, you will deliver it for me. You keep 10%, I get the rest, or whatever it was. Yeah. But she, he didn't. Look at what my daughter did. She made me sign it. OK, you see? <laughs> yes. So there are many, many, many of us, OK? You shake hands. But then the terms are not, and then at the end, but I thought you said, no, I said this. No. So set your terms up front. So early on, he understood making a contract, setting it up front, agreeing to it. And because this is the United States, putting it put it in writing. In the Philippines, it's not so much. More or less, you know, it's not, uh, it's not done. Or even if it's done, you get, uh, you know, people don't, you can be also fooled, and then you're in court. So in the Philippines, try not to be in court, because you will win only if you pay the judge. <laughs> in the United States, you have a chance of winning because we have an independent judiciary. In fact, I did sue a judge, and I can name names. Uh, judge Lynn Love Demias was dismissed by the Supreme Court uh, March of uh, 2018. There were 14 of us who sued, but what really got him was a criminal case that instead of convicting, he just discharged the guy. But uh, we're among his victims, and that is so true. And we were talking about it. Yes. Well, the, the, the rule is, if possible, don't go to court. Try to settle. Get a third yes. person to help you settle. And only when it's totally impossible, then you go to court. Yes. So uh, a lot of uh, young people today uh, don't even want to talk about retirement. Somebody, uh, people feel that it's too early to talk about retirement. Uh, but my, um, you know, going back to people investing young, well, what I'm saying is like to my daughter, if you're 25 and you want to retire at 50, hey, you got only 25 years. How much, do you th how much money do you think you need to do the gig? This is what you call the gig generation today. And it really concerns me that they're doing the gig that they want to do. They don't have 401k. They don't even think about it. It's not important to them. So uh, one of the reasons I came out here is um, I have here about business retirement planning, what you can do yourself, because I, I, I need to come up with seminars and teach them how to do this, that by 50, you don't have a boss anymore, you know, because now you have your own uh, accounts. But uh, what do you say to our uh, viewers who are now in this age bracket, 25, 30, based on your, what you've seen, you know, what? You've experienced with your husband. Well, first of all, if you are earning a thousand, a thousand five, whatever you're earning, okay, be sure you set aside ten percent for to give away, okay, and then a certain percent to save, because in the end it is creating wealth. You know your professional life, you create wealth, and so sometimes I have business owners who do not even when they do their Accounting, they don't have salary for themselves because for them the salary is the, so the net income. No. What happens if you are sick? You do not budget that. So it's wrong cost accounting. That you said, well, I get all the net profit anyway. It's wrong cost accounting. So for my husband, when he bought the company, okay, his concept is to create wealth. And so he was going to buy, improve it, and then sell it buy, and he bought the second one, is Beatrice International, and his concept was to sell it. 
make it profitable, then you sell. And so when he died, I, I took over the company. So in my mind, it wasn't to create an empire, it was to sell. So he bought it for one billion, all borrowed money. Well, he had no, he had a small down payment, 15 million. That's all he get put in for, for 51%. And then he borrowed all the rest. By the time he died, he was able to pay two-thirds of it. There was still 350 million debt with 13% interest. So when I came in, I refinanced it, and I had 175 million in debt. And then I started selling the company. Uh, and so by the time I was ready to, uh, by, but then I sold it, I paid down the debt, so zero debt, and I sold piece by piece by piece for a total of one billion. So for those business owners, okay, yes, you want to create an empire, but in the end, it's creating wealth for your family. Right. Okay, so think about it. Will I go to continue making business? No, at the end point, you have to have exit. Watch your exit. Sell it. If, that's your, if, that is your, if that is your concept, then start talking to your accountant <coughs> because you will sell it according to your profit. They call it EBITDA. Earnings before interest, depreciation, and appreciation. Oh, yes. Those are the accounting Cash terms. flow. Whatever is your cash flow, times 10, that's how much you sell it. Depends on your business. Okay. So, so I, for all those business owners who are here, okay, think about creating wealth. Because I want an empire. I want my name to be known. But at the end of the day, what do you have? Okay, so that's your question. Yes, yes. To, about saving it's, it's for really when you're young. When you're old, exactly. even, even, yeah. yeah. So you see, this is a very opportune time. You'll never hear Attorney Lloyd and Nicholas Lewis talking about business. It's always something related to some community events or politics or somebody's running and she's helping somebody. It's always her helping somebody, supporting somebody. For the first time ever in media, she's sharing her views, her expertise about business. So, um, so thank you so much for joining us. But, and please, uh, if you have any question right now, raise your question so she could uh, uh, answer these questions. And I love my listeners to you know benefit from this, and uh, because this is a very rare opportunity, you should you know, take advantage. You'll never hear Madame Lloyd and Nicholas talk about business like this. Yes, but one final thing, okay? I congratulate you for being as good looking as you are at 60, okay? But there are three things since we are just in the beginning of the year that you have covered by this, okay? You have the spiritual goal, you have the priest talking, you have the uh, charitable institution. So don't forget about the spiritual. Then you have the financial, which is, you know, telling people how to earn money and for yourself too, buying land, buying stocks, okay, so second is financial, and the third is physical, so at 60, you're still looking good, man. <laughs> Let me just give you some market update, now let's talk about business. So you've seen the things that happened last December, a few days before Christmas. This year we miss what you call the Santa Claus Rally. The Santa Claus Rally has been going on for 50 years. For the first time, we didn't see that happen this year, and it was fear mongering. There was no reason. GDP was up 3.5, but right after Christmas, when our uh, uh, Fed Chairman Powell said um, he increased the federal funds rate, what that means is he's increasing the, the rate, the cost of borrowing. What that means to you is tightening, meaning the cost of money to borrow is higher, and therefore its uh, credit is tighter. And in effect, GDP went down, it's 3.2 by the end of the year. And another thing happened, uh, we have the um, federal shutdown, right? When you talk of GDP, you're talking about marketing and movement of goods and services. Of course, there's limit, limitation. So GDP went down to 0.9. But we're expecting everything to go up. Think about it. 
you know, this topic has been the same eight years ago, ten years ago, when we were doing the stock trading until today. How many grandmas do you know are using Facebook? How, you know, how many grandmas do you know are all in, in cell phone texting? The world has changed. Technology is there. They're saying, tech rec, listen, technology is going to stay. We're still uh, buying drones. We have robot cleaners, the robo cleaners in our homes. We have other robots. You have Alexa, grandma asking Alexa how to bake or getting a recipe. This is endless technology. The secrets to investing really is to stay invested. But um, I have given some of my predictions, but this is not really predictions, but more of our learned opinion that um, the investing has changed a little bit. From large cap S&P 500, we have been slowly shifting, as many of my clients here know. I've given you small cap and some emerging because it's, we're slowly shifting, but it's still there. You cannot leave the market now in order to get to something like 4%. Uh, and I remember Epifania told me, I'm 70, but hey, I'm looking forward to 30 more years, right? You told me last week, ergo, we're planning for 30 years. How can your money last 30 years if you make 4% and inflation is 2%? So folks, let's um, keep our head up and uh, let's not listen to too much fear mongering because the market is good. Is there a way, uh, is it still growing? Yes, the way we see it, the market will, uh, you know, there's still room for growth. You will see this up and down, but United States is the best place to be. I say, let's keep it home. International stuff, yes, a little bit, but let's keep majority of the money home. So with that, thank you so much. Can for I this just thing. say, yes, please. Proverbs. Three, five, and six. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do, and He will show you which path to take. Thank you.